Hey everybody, it's Eric. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. First of all, it's free, and I absolutely love that about Anchor. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer, and Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. In other words, you can start making money as soon as possible. It's everything that you need to make a podcast all in one place. So if you're interested in starting your own podcast, remember to download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Burpees are just the worst. They are just, every time I do it, I swear I hear Satan laugh. I just, they're just terrible. Yeah. They're just the worst. Well, welcome to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> a show where three people sit down to talk about whatever they want to talk about. I'm your host, Eric, and we're joined today by our other two hosts, my best friend, Brandon, hey. and my mom, Mom. Hello. Her name is Andy. How are you guys today? Well, I'm doing really well. How are you? Uh, I can't complain. Can't complain. Brandon? I hear uh, I'm complain. here. <laughs> <laughs> if we had so more those, of the Brandon saga. <laughs> oh, for those who are who are enjoying my misery along with Eric. Um <laughs> no, last week my uh, wife and I actually on uh, Friday, July 17th celebrated our 10 year anniversary. So we went upstate uh to the northern or the upper peninsula of Michigan and uh, got a uh, stayed up there for about 5 days and went hiking and saw a bunch of waterfalls and took a really cool cruise along the pictured rocks which if you don't know what those are just search pictured rocks michigan upper peninsula um it's really cool um really beautiful and uh so got some great pictures had you know some uh, really great times together and good food and you know just enjoyed ourselves and then this morning we get back and i think i mentioned previously how uh once we get back this Monday today, I was going to be taking my car in, you know, that I just bought a month ago after I told the other one a month before my last, uh, my Chevy Equinox, um, started having what sounded like a transmission issue with the engine. So I made an appointment, went to take it in this morning. Um, and my wife was going to follow me there and then bring me back home and go to work herself. Well, we have a, a driveway that's right on a major road. So you can pull in and then you have to back out. Well, we backed out and there's a center lane. It's not just a two lane, so we have a three lane there. So there's a center lane and my wife backed into that and uh, she was about to straighten out and pull forward. And uh, the people in the house slash driveway straight across from us just decided to back their van out without even checking and just completely dented in my wife's passenger door. Oh. Um, yeah, um, just uh, fortunately it looks like, it just looks cosmetic at this point. You can still open and close the door, although the top part is kind of uh, stuck out. So if it rained, you know, water would get in there. So she called into the dealership where we bought it. We have a warranty there and they said, yeah, you know, call over to our collision center, make an appointment. We did. And eventually uh, got that all taken care of. And I drove my car over to the dealership where I was going to. And she was, she waited there with the, with the, you know, a uh, woman who'd backed into her for the cop to show up and, you know, do everything, you know, all that taken care of. Um, so I got my car taken over and called a buddy of mine who lived just around the corner to, you know, see if he'd mind grabbing me and bringing me back. Cause you know, if not, it was only about maybe a 30 minute, 45 minute walk tops. Um, it's not too far from our place here, but uh, so that was fun. And then got her, you know, got an appointment with her car and then called her out, you know, called, uh, her uh, father, who, you know, if you remember a few weeks ago, fell off a ladder and broke his neck. Um, let me tell you, 2020 folks ain't just about COVID this year for us. <laughs> um, unfortunately, her father's doing fine, but he's not supposed to work. Um, and uh, he's letting us use his pickup truck in the meantime, since it's just kind of gathering dust in the driveway, <laughs> or at least it's supposed to be. But anyway, that's a topic for another day. Um, <laughs> so we got that all taken care of. And uh, I, I, I was taking my car in at 945 till we got everything straightened up. And, and, and of course, they live on the north side of town. The dealership is on the south side of town. And we live we live on the south side of town close to the dealership. So we had to go to the north side to go back to the south side to find out that um, their collision shop isn't at the main dealership. It's literally maybe not even a mile from our house. So we come back to kind of the midway point, drop it off there. Then I take her to work over on the west side <laughs> and grab lunch uh, for the both of us and then drop her off at work and come back. I think I, it was about 1.30 or so. Oh, so four hours later. <laughs> uh, 
Well, the saga continues. <laughs> so no, now I'm starting to feel no. bad because I wish I hadn't said anything last week. I was, I thought, I no, it's I'm fine. Sure, it's all over, and then <laughs> surely nothing else can happen. Surely nothing else. Can God happen. said, "Hold my beer and don't I call know, me Shirley." Right? <laughs> yeah, Jeez, it is 2020, Brandon. Oh my gosh! I'm yeah. get all your bad luck out of the year. Maybe it's um, maybe it's like um. Uh, uh, the, the Chinese, uh, the year, like some people get like 12 years, you know, like the year of bad luck or something. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, maybe this is your year of all bad that. luck and, and stuff. And it might be just the Chinese zodiac out to get you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and I got to say, my, my wife put a picture up on Facebook right away. And yeah. and we had some friends like just immediately contact us, you know, are, are you guys okay? And and she, she made it clear that, you know, no one was hurt. We're all yeah. okay. It was just another thing <laughs> and we had a few folks just reach out immediately and that, that was just very very touching and very thankful yeah. to have friends like that That's so right. <sighs> well i don't have anything nearly that exciting um courtney and i've been eating healthy and she's been trying to eat a lot more lettuce and there's a <laughs> point to this story i know that it's a weird specifically lettuce <laughs> i should um, not have taken yeah. a sip of mountain dew at that moment i know right so <laughs> she's been eating a lot of lettuce but she <laughs> <laughs> she was spinach more specifically but on monday she ate ice, iceberg lettuce with a wrap it was around wednesday and all of a sudden she goes hey eric and i went what she goes look at this look at this and i looked down and she's pointing putting her hand out her marriage ring and uh there's a bit of iceberg lettuce that had been wrapped around the ring <laughs> she goes i have no idea how long this has been here <laughs> i just <laughs> <laughs> we both started laughing and then we didn't say a word we both just went straight into the car and drove straight to the pizza place <laughs> <laughs> didn't as is the only it. appropriate response the only appropriate response when you don't know how long lettuce has been wrapped into it's stuck into your ring and it's time to go to the pizza place and take a break <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's phenomenal. <laughs> Although, as, as hor I, I must say that, as, as horribly or at least not greatly as the day started out, um, Missy's, uh, her dad comes from a larger family. He's one of eight. Yeah. And uh, so one of his sisters and her uh, husband, Missy's aunt, Jan and Uncle Skeeter, um, Uncle were Skeeter. visiting. Yep, Uncle Skeeter. Really? I um, love it. Yeah, well, he likes it better than Merle, so... <laughs> Okay, well, you got to give him that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so that was kind of neat because he showed up, and then I, I didn't realize that one of her other uncles was, I guess, visiting at the same time uh, from Arizona. So him and his wife and daughter were there. Other daughters are about our age. And then Missy's cousin and her two kids came out, and Missy's brother and wife and our niece Audrey came out, and it was great. We had a little mini family reunion, got some dominoes, and. It was a beautiful evening out up here. Um, clear skies, no humidity, you know, nice breeze going. You know, kind of what summer should be, in my yeah. opinion. <laughs> but it was just really nice. There was a dog. There were some balls being thrown around. A bunch of little kids running and laughing. And it was just a nice moment in time. Yeah. I'm glad it rallied at the end. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. <laughs> I'm glad it rallied at the end. Uh, well, we've been – it was a little – it was really hot here today, but then it eased off. But uh, another um, – I don't know. Did you guys catch the comment? I know I had texted you guys. For those that are listening, if you're not up to speed on it, there you got a couple more days left. There's actually a comment that you can see by the Naked Eye, the Neil Wise comment. And uh, yeah, I texted you. So, Brandon, did you guys? Oh, you know, I honestly, I think you sent that the day before we left on our trip, and I had completely forgotten about it. Until uh, so I'm glad you reminded me. Yeah. Um, uh, we've been trying to see it every single night, but we can't find it. <laughs> <laughs> We drive. We drove all over town looking for a good place to see it, like uh, outside of town. We were in places that, like, um, probably not the safest place to be. Just you know, there was probably dead bodies, and we just didn't know it kind of place. We just could not see it. I don't know what it is, but uh, yeah, for those that are listening, if you want to catch a comment, it's going to go away, and it'll be probably the best, uh, the brightest comment we'll have for a very long time. This this particular comment won't come back for six thousand eight hundred years, so. See it while you can, for sure. Uh, they say it's pretty. I What's see the name of the comment phone. again. Uh, Neil Wise. It's named after the. Okay. Okay. All my friends are posting pictures of it, and it sounds nice. <laughs> 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 but uh, then again, I do have one up over them. I, I do see the shuttles whenever they're launched here. We are close enough to um, uh, the NASA location here, uh, Cape Canaveral, that you can actually see the shuttles launch. So, I do have one up over my friends. They might see a comment, but I get to see all the satellites get launched. So. That's a win. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, well, like I say, seems like every week lately. 
sorry this happened, but I'm glad you're okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, goodness. Goodness. Mom, you got anything going on? Are you just working real hard? I'm working really hard. Let's see. The Southwest flights fly over our house. Oh. Um, <laughs> Oh. Actually, we did go. Um, I got my COVID test back the other day, and it's negative. Okay. And my father-in-law got his back, and it was negative. So we actually drove over to their house just for Saturday, and we socially distanced, which was interesting because um, you know we're sitting on their patio, but they were like, "Okay, is this six feet?" It was more like about fifteen feet. Yeah, and they're huggers. <laughs> they are. They really, really, they really struggled with it, yeah. but they did. They did well. Um, so that was good. I think that, you know, that they're both in their 80s and I, they're very much extroverts. And so they're really missing seeing people. So we did go over for the day. And then she sent me home with all of, let's see, her mother's China, her mother's like whole set of this fall staff glassware um, and a whole silver set. I'm like, what are you doing? She's like, well, I don't have room for this stuff. I'm thinking it's been in your house now for 20 years. What do you mean you don't have room for this? So anyway, so I had to spend today in between sessions trying to figure out how to get all this into like cabinets and things. Um, it's very nice. And it was really nice that I have her mother's stuff. But yeah, we did that. Um, and we, it's, it's about a three hour drive. So we didn't stop anywhere there or back. Um, we just went there and <laughs> it's real, huh? Yeah. Yeah. We just didn't drink a whole lot for the trip. Um, <laughs> you know, because I didn't want to stop anywhere, oh, yeah. but yeah, it was, it was good. We had a good time. And then, um, we spent yesterday at the pool, our neighborhood pool. We have the pool monitor and so everyone's physically distancing there too. Right. Um, so that was nice. And today I'm working. So yeah. That's my exciting life. Nothing like Brandon's, thank God. <laughs> right? For all of us, I think. I know, I know. I didn't even see the comment. You live in interesting times. <laughs> yeah. Well, you do. We're all just observing you. That's that, right. Somebody <laughs> cursed you with that. Wasn't that an old curse? May you live in interesting times? Yeah, it's an, an old ancient curse? Chinese curse. Is that what it was? Yeah. yeah. So I think that somebody cursed you. But but yeah, so yeah, just, just trying to stay out of the way of 2020 is what I'm trying right. to do, to be honest. Just hiding. We did I need order, that on a magnet. <laughs> I know, I know. We did order pizza uh, yesterday. So, you know, hey, that was good. That's the first pizza I've had since quarantine started. So it was oh. really good. <laughs> yeah. pizza, don't you? I know, it was good. No. Oh, and cheesecake. So it was a good day. Wow. You're in a coma by the night. <laughs> I know, I know. My sugar coma. was high, but yeah, it was so good. So good, yeah. uh, Speaking of cheesecake, another good thing that happened today. Um, I didn't have any. However, um, um, I, I think I've told you guys before about the Everything is Cheesecake truck here in Lansing that, you know, sells slices yeah, on the weekends. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, one of the local spots, Goodfellas Bagels, um, just posted today that they're, you know, selling uh, everything is cheesecake slices, regular uh, strawberry, um, you know, along with the regular sandwiches and stuff. Nice. So my uh, my friend Emily, we're, we're kind of foodie friends, and we tag each other in posts, you know, if the other one doesn't see it first. And uh, so as soon as I saw that, or as soon as I opened up my, my uh, thing, I, w I saw it, and I went to tag her and then saw, oh, she's already tagged me in this one. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's cool. Man. So now I can get spectacular cheesecake during the week, which maybe I'll go grab a slice tomorrow. Today's I was going to say, I think that warrants it. Yeah. yeah. At this point. Every day is a good day for cheesecake. Oh, no. There's never been mm -hmm. a day. Yeah. You can get by sure. that one. We've been, um, I've been obsessed with uh, authentic Japanese cuisine lately. I don't know where that's coming from, but I've been cooking all kinds of Ooh. Japanese cuisine and stuff and ordering, gotten obsessed with ordering it online, like all the ingredients and stuff. So yeah, it, it's funny how you look for comfort food. I think it's just spending the time in Japan that we did. It's like when I really want something to settle my soul, it's like ramen or teriyaki or things like that. You know, that's just how I'm, I'm just naturally drawn to. So yeah, I get it, man. Go get cheesecake. Yeah. Sometimes mm -hmm. you just got to treat yourself, especially in 2020 because it's been a bag of butts. <laughs> There's just no other expression for 2020. It's a one big giant bag of asses <laughs> for sure. So speaking of asses, <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> We're all, both of us are getting better and better at these segues every week. We want to do part two of Florida Man. I cannot wait to see what stories you guys picked. For those that are joining us for the very first time, this is part two of Florida Man stories. Florida Man, if you don't know what it is, it's a phenomenon that you'll find all over the internet. You can just Google Florida Man and you'll see uh, stories pop up. And it has to do with the fact that Florida people tend to do crazy things and make the news about it. And that it's become a bit of an internet joke if, you're, if you've not seen it or heard of it before. And uh, us three here, we all uh, spent lots of time in Florida and we have, all three of us have a special place in our hearts about the Florida band stories. So part one last week, we definitely talked about some really funny stories. And uh, we kind of wanted to do a part two, but with a little bit of a twist. I know that mom and Brandon have got their stories. I'm gonna, I have some stories to talk about, but I'm also going to tell some really fun stories of Florida lore that take place in Central Florida. A lot of people don't realize there's all kinds of really interesting stories and lore and ghost stories and all this sort of stuff here in Florida that's really unique to the locals. And I, I kind of want to kind of show you guys a little bit that the Florida man thing has always been around and we've always been kind of weird in the state. That sound fun to everybody? Sounds like Absolutely. a lot of fun. All right. Who wants to go first with your lovely Florida man story or woman or child for that matter? Oh, I'll go first. But mine is actually a Florida possum story. Oh. Wow. <laughs> and and I, I chose this one because this happened right around the corner from my wife, the first apartment townhouse that my uh, wife and I lived in. Um, so possum breaks into liquor store, gets skunky drunk. Which <laughs> I'm not a fan of I saw of that what headline, they did there. But, you know, I see what they did. They tried. Uh, <laughs> a dad wrote that, I'm sure. <laughs> You oh yeah it, but he poked it with his one finger he's like exclamation point he's like boom i have made my career with this anyway i'm sorry go ahead continue no no no. you're fine so this takes place in fort walton beach which uh eric and i spoke last week about pensacola florida where we met uh, and fort walton is about an hour maybe an hour and 15 minutes east of uh uh pensacola there up on the panhandle it's, it's definitely the drunk cousin of pensacola i'll say that. yeah so uh, um People who might be familiar with the uh, Florida Panhandle, you might have heard of Destin. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure you've heard of Panama City, if not. But Destin is kind of like where the the rich people go to vacation. Panama City is where the college students goes. Pensacola is where the white trash goes. And Fort Walton Beach is the town that they drive through to get there. Um, <laughs> It's so accurate. Um, it's it's a big military town. Uh, Hurlburt Air Force Base is the largest uh, Air Force Base in the continental U.S., if not the world. I, I know for sure the U.S. Um, and then there's also another one, Eglin Air Force Base, on the other side of town. Uh, plus, nearby, you have Duke Field and Whiting Field in Pensacola. Uh, Naval Aviation Station is Naval Air Station is just you know out in Pensacola. So a lot of military in this town. <clears throat> But uh, there's where we lived was this place called Okaloosa Island. And so as you drive along Highway 98, which is, you know, the main Florida panhandle, you know, along the beach highway kind of um you'll go through fort walton and at one point um it's the only way to get to destin florida without going all the way up around and you know taking about a 45 minute detour and paying some tolls right. um and you're you're driving on okaloosa island for the most part and as soon as you get onto the island you can kind of uh, take a right and switch back to where there's a bunch of hotels and private beach access back there's where my wife and i live so and uh, one of the first things you'll come across is cash's liquor store um, so an opossum that snuck into a liquor store and apparently helped itself to a few drinks the day after Thanksgiving was brought into the Emerald Coast Wildlife Refuge for treatment before it was released Thursday. A worker there found the opossum up on a shelf. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Michelle Pettis, a wildlife health technician at the refuge, said the juvenile female opossum was brought in by a Fort Walton Beach police officer on November 24th. He said that a Cash's liquor store employee at the AJ's on the Bayou location discovered the opossum next to a broken and empty handle of alcohol the morning after Thanksgiving. <laughs> so, statistically, the largest single day of drinking in the United States is the night before Thanksgiving. Yeah. Unless you're a possum, then it's the day after. Uh, a worker there found the opossum high up on a shelf next to a cracked open bottle of liquor with nothing in it. Assuming the opossum drank it all, he brought it to us, and we looked over her, and she definitely wasn't fully acting normal. Pettis said the opossum appeared disoriented, was excessively salivating, and appeared to be pale. The staff quickly pumped the marsupial full of fluids and cared for her as she sobered up. 
uh, can I interrupt you just a second? Absolutely. I, I, before you finish the story, I, I, how do these people determine that she looked pale? Has anybody ever seen an opossum? I've seen lots of them. <laughs> I was kind of wondering the same thing myself. They're not known for their deep tans. <laughs> not exactly. Did they look even more like paper and fish belly? Yeah, and how do they determine that the possum was acting erratically, right? I mean, who who walks in and is like, I run the cashier register, I run the ca cash register at a local store liquor store, but I happen to be an expert at opossums too. My moment has arrived. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow, that works. I'm sorry. Continue. I'm sorry. No, 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 not at all. Uh, Pettis said the drunken possum was the first for her. She added that the possum was fairly large and was curious as to how she was able to break into the liquor store. She said the opossum did not appear to have a hangover. Uh, Cashmore, who owns the liquor store, said the possum had gotten into a bottle of bourbon. He also <laughs> added that as far as he knew, she was 21 years old. She came in from the outside and was up in the rafters. When she came through, she knocked a bottle of liquor off the shelf. When she got down on the floor, she drank the whole damn bottle, Moore said. Moore added that it was the first time in my life he had an opossum break into his store and drink his alcohol, and that was pretty unusual. I... Uh, the fact that he has to make that comment just um, tells you everything about Florida, specifically the Florida Panhandle. I know we had that. Remember the police story you told last week? Oh, oh hold, hold on, hold on, though. Four, but oh. it just goes to show that even the animals are impressed with caches. <laughs> Free advertisement for the win. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> So they don't have any idea. They have no idea how he how she got in there, right? Uh, apparently, she came in through the ceiling somehow. Like I, yeah, they're still. Uh, that, that's their best guess. Got in through the rafters. My first initial reaction is I want to party with her. Right. <laughs> she right. knows how to party, but you know what's funny? It's like yeah, you know Florida how to get girl. into a liquor store. All right. <laughs> yeah, all right. It's like every Florida girl that you meet. <laughs> you know how to get into a liquor <laughs> store, and then weeks later they show up with five kids. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm just thinking, I don't know that I would want to buy anything there if like oversized rodents can break in and just like, you know, drink. Yeah, all fortunately, we moved away about five years ago. And this story yeah. is just from, I think, last year, the year before. Um, but I got this from uh, NF, uh, NWF Daily News, Northwest Florida Daily News dot com. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I remember hearing this story when it first came out. Again, it kind of made the podcast circuit. And I was like, wait, Cash's Liquor Store on Okaloosa Island, Fort Walton Beach? I could give you the address of that liquor store because we drove past it every day on our way to and from work. Sure, that's the only reason you know that address. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> no comment. Well, we had certain contracts at the time. <laughs> 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 I I grew up outside of Fort Walton Beach, and um, yeah, I remember I remember cash is quite well. Uh, you, you're speaking of like I don't want to buy my liquor at a place that opossums can break into. North of Fort Walton, out in the middle of the country, they would have these drive-through liquor stores. Do you remember this, Mom? I do. Yeah. They had one in Pensacola, right by my buddy's place. They that, did. So, and, yeah. and they'd give you a plastic cup with ice and a straw for use when you get home. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I, I still haven't figured that. That is real. That is yeah, real. it's a real thing, the drive-through liquor stores. I just haven't figured that one out yet, but, you know, yeah. You pull up and you tell them what they want through a window and they pass it through it like a yeah. drive through window, like at Hardee's or something. It's amazing. Yeah. It's, I, have, I still have never seen it anywhere else but Florida. It's just Florida. It's New just, Orleans. Yo, that's true. I wonder if, yeah, that's probably where, but it's just everyone's drinking here all the time. Yeah. And, <laughs> so, and now with COVID measures, um, yeah. some restaurants in Michigan. <laughs> Yeah, like but it's generally like their pre-mixed cocktails or things like that around here. Yeah, we've got but, some yeah. restaurants doing that around here too. Yeah. It's funny. Man, I love it. Possum breaks in and gets drunk. That's amazing. Skunky drunk. Skunky drunk. Skunky drunk. Yeah. Skunky yeah. drunk. Mom, well, you got a story? I do. I do. So the reason I picked this is because it's dealing with a 70-year-old man and I figure, you know, not too many more years. I'll be 70 and who knows? I might try this. So <laughs> this incident happened in Polk County was actually caught on camera by an off-duty Hillsborough County deputy in Polk County. It was a Hillsborough County deputy in Polk County. I mean, but well, anyway. they're side by side, so. I know, I know. So the video, which you could see if you went online to WFLA.com News Channel 8, the video shows a man identified as 70-year-old person standing up and hanging out of the sunroom, sunroof of his car with his arms spread out as he's driving. 
The deputy provided Florida Highway Patrol with a license plate number, which led troopers to this man. When a trooper pulled him over and asked him about sitting on his sunroof, the man said, I don't know about that. The arrest report stated that he told the trooper he wanted to turn himself in because, quote, my wife treats me like a servant and she's the mistress and I'm tired of this crap, unquote. Then he said, lock me up. I'd rather go to jail than go back home. The deputy who witnessed the incident told troopers he saw him bouncing back and forth in the center lane, then saw the man open the sunroof and get on top of the car. The deputy said he drove up next to the car and noticed no one else was in the car with this man. During his interview, the deputy told troopers that this man sped up to over 100 miles an hour per, at times, then slowed to about 40 miles per hour. After he was arrested, the trooper said that this man admitted he sat on the sunroof, but said the car was on cruise control. According to the arrest report, he said the car drives itself and has a gigantic computer in it. Troopers also said that he added, I thought it would be a nice way to praise God for a minute, and I thought it would be nice at the time, and that's what I did. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so if you go on to WFLA.com, oh News Channel 8, you actually can see the video that the deputy took of this man literally standing like as is at the front of Titanic. Oh my gosh. Or he's going down the highway. So uh, what was that website again? WLA? Yeah. WFLA.com, News Channel 8. Um, so and it's Florida man arrested for hanging out sunroof while driving on. I-4, Eric's favorite highway. It is. I oh, of course it is. <laughs> now, there's a lot to unpack with this story. First of all, <laughs> any 70-year-old man who climbs up there and is hanging out like, you know, you know, Rose from, or whatever his name is, from Jack from Titanic. Oh, I am watching the video now and it's glorious. There, There is a level of respect that I must give a 70-year-old man. I don't think I could do that right. Oh, now. I want to be him when I'm 70 years old. <laughs> yes, you got to do for him. Might as well. See? See? Oh, I will <laughs> praise God. Oh, my gosh. Praise the sun. Is <laughs> praise him. Second thing I, I want to talk about, though, is the initial thing is I don't want to go back to my wife. And then the whiplash of I was praising God. Yes. I just, that's just, that's so floor. Well, he denied that's it. That's telling. <laughs> that's telling, right? That's, that's telling. What he was really saying to God is take me now. <laughs> Please, Apparently. Just, Jesus, take the wheel. Take everything. Just take it right off the side of the road. <laughs> Exactly. You're right. That's amazing. So there's some respect there, like begrudging respect to that man. Oh. I have to give. That's oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Now on I four, the most dangerous uh -huh. road in the country right now. That, that would be why it would be the most dangerous because we yeah. have people there like that. The most normal part of the story was the report that he was driving up 100 miles an hour and then slowing down to 40 miles an hour. That's just any given day on I four. <laughs> This is any day, man. I know yeah. that's, that's amazing. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. If you get a chance, go online and look at that video because it is amazing. Yeah. Oh gosh, that's amazing. I've got a story for you, but it's a bit different. It's actually a Central Florida folktale story. Um, I live pretty close to this area to the point where I've heard the story from locals and I've actually looked it up. And a book called Weird Florida documented it and wrote it down. And I think it's really interesting, and it kind of shows you a little bit about the history of the type of people that, uh, that have, you know, settled the area that I live in. You ready? It's called The Demon of Round Cypress. You guys ready? It's not necessarily a Florida man story, but it's just interesting. Like so, a again, I got this <laughs> the details from a book called Weird Florida. Definitely a great book. You guys should check it out. But I will say that I've definitely heard it from the locals. They, there are locals on my road that believe in it very, very strongly. So you need to find this place. You need a snake-proof boots and a healthy imagination. There is a river that I live off of called the St. John's River. It flows, and it actually flows north. A lot of people don't know that about St. John's River. So it starts way down in Stewart, Florida area and, and, and by the uh, Everglades. and works its way north and dumps out in Jacksonville. That's really unusual. Most uh, rivers don't flow that way, but it does here in Florida. And uh, off these off this river, this river is um, is fed by springs and, and all kinds of like creeks and stuff. It's a really beautiful place. And what's interesting about St. John's River is that it's just full of old cypresses, right? You guys follow me so far? Yes. In fact, old cypresses are what turns the uh, 
water tea color because there's a chemical they secrete. It's the, same, it's the same chemical that tea secretes. Even though it's perfectly good drinking water, it turns the, turns the water um, into black. That's why you hear the expression black water. So hmm. it's really cool. It's a beautiful eco, ecosystem. It's my favorite part of Florida. And there's a particular, it's a specific reason why I live here because I love it. So having further to do, one other thing that you guys need to know about this story is what we call around Cyprus is another term for cypress head. What we mean by that is it's a collection of trees, of cypresses trees that actually form almost a perfect circle. You'll see it in nature quite a bit. And what's interesting about these um, brown cypresses is that it, it creates its own mini ecosystem, if you will. Because cypresses actually put out their knees that it's basically roots that stick out, out of the water and that's how they get their oxygen. So with further ado, you guys ready? Here we go. Now that I teed it up with really interesting bo slash boring facts, depending on who you are. Cypress heads are usually a self-contained ecosystem with taller trees reaching up for sunlight in the center with smaller trees around the edge, right? We're not mm -hmm. sure who named the place, probably the earliest fishermen in the area or specifically moonshiners. But this name has always had a reputation of ill repute. According to the local for folklore, a demon or a witch, take your pick. Now, personally, when I've talked to the locals in the area, it was a witch, resides in the darkness of round Cyprus. This evil entity was a shapeshifter capable of taking on the form of any animal, in particular, a bobtail panther. Indeed, it is confirmed reports there was a bobtail panther specifically that roamed this area during the 1950s, and several old hunters have taken credit for shooting off the big cat's tail. That is true. If you talk to the locals, they have, their grandfathers have taken credit of killing uh, or taking off the tail of this this uh, bobcat, uh, not bobcat, listen to me, this panther. It got to the point where local boys were warned to stay away from the area, especially in the 1930s. There were tales where some men were chased from their hunting camps uh, by unseen forces that shook the trees, belched hot air, and made loud growling noises. Other stories were told around campfires about how everything from ghosts to alligators lived in the sinister sanctuary around Cyprus. Now, when I talk to the locals, they'll tell you all of these things. It's interesting how Weird Florida did interviews with the people that I've met, and they were heard the same stories. And I've actually been to Round Cyprus. Um, you, you, the only way you can get to it is either you hike in some really dangerous swamps or you get on a boat to take you there. Huh. And uh, I've did, we've rented boats over the years to go up to St. John's River. In fact, it was just last summer we did. And it's really interesting to go in there. It is extremely eerie. It, it's extremely dark, uh, even in the middle of the day because of the shade. And it's actually surprisingly pretty cool considering it's in the middle of Florida because of all the shade. It's just always shaded. Nothing moves there. But then there's groans and creaks. And I imagine it's probably the trees rubbing on each other. When they went and investigated, they found all kinds of interesting artifacts from old moonshiners. And some people who obviously don't believe in the tail wonder if moonshiners started the tail <laughs> in order so people wouldn't come snooping around and messing with their stuff. Oh, that's clever. Yeah, awesome. locals have put out, pulled out a lot of really interesting um, like uh, moonshining um, jars and bits and pieces to their distillery and all this sort of stuff. So people think that this was all a big hoax in order just to get people to leave them alone, especially in the 30s during the Prohibition era. And so what's interesting about all of this is that now we've got a local legend just right down the road from us that uh, believes that there's this witch that turns into a panther and stalks men that are driving up their boats up and down the river. So <laughs> there's your story about the demon of round Cyprus. Okay. Oh, wow. Well, you know, spirits, demon, alcohol. I think that makes sense. Put it all together. <laughs> There's always connection between someone drunk and some ghost. <laughs> it's usually some kind of connection for sure. Yeah. So yeah, especially here in Florida. <laughs> we started drinking very early in this state for sure. Apparently, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. really interesting. We we didn't mind one bit or the other. All right, who goes next? That's what I got. All right. I've got naked Florida man bites canine, punches and spits on deputies. Columbia County, Florida. It's usually the police's jo dog's job to sink its teeth into an unruly suspect, but deputies in Columbia County said 38-year-old Florida man beat their canine to the bite. An arrest report 
reviewed by WJAX, shows Florida man faces charges for simple battery on a law enforcement officer, resisting arrest with violence, and aggravated assault on a, uh, aggravated battery on a service dog. It started on December 27th when a woman called deputies to report Watts for using meth. Ah, uh, that great post-Christmas meth. <laughs> when deputies arrived, they received another call from a neighbor reporting a man in his yard with a flashlight. Investigators saw the light and approached the suspect, but as they moved closer, they could hear strange noises coming from the shallow creek. The arrest report said that Florida man laughed and made bird noises as he paced back and forth. Other than the mud smeared over his body, deputies said that he was completely nude. Before they could get him in custody, deputies say he ran away and hid under the stairs of a nearby mobile home. When he came out of hiding, a deputy tried to detain him, but that ended in fisticuffs. Authorities say the Florida man punched the deputy, then another deputy had seen enough and deployed a taser. It didn't work. The deputy who had been punched pulled out his own taser, took aim at Watts, and fired. Still nothing. <laughs> As the suspect ran away, authorities decided to wait for backup. Six more deputies and their canine, Casper, joined them. The crew managed to catch up to the suspect in the woods where he reportedly got down on his hands and knees to growl like a dog. Accordingly, they sent their dog to subdue him. But deputy said Watts pounced on the dog and bit its ear. <laughs> this, the Florida this, man, oh my gosh. The Florida man allegedly wrestled Casper to the ground with a chokehold. Casper is the dog, remember? Of course. Even so, he couldn't hold him forever. Once free, deputy said that Casper bit Florida man on the head, finally giving deputies the chance to take control. But despite being in custody, deputy said that he still remained defiant. As they led him out of the woods, he spit on one of the deputies. A local hospital treated the man's dog bite before authorities locked him inside the county jail. Oh, my gosh. Oh, goodness. But did they treat the dog's man bite? I was wondering. That was a story that just kept giving. In fact, if I made Florida Man Bingo, I think we would have had it. Oh, that, yeah. I think we got everything in there. We got everything. We've got meth. We've got mobile homes. We've got a naked man. We've got dual tasers. Dual tasers. <laughs> Animals. Fist to cuff. Animals. Yep. Bites. A mobile I home. Get meth. under the mobile home steps. Did we say meth? Did we say meth? Meth yeah, was the first one. Meth so is always the first one in Florida Man. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. That's a gift that keeps on giving that story. Oh my gosh. That's yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I love it, man. That's like you try to come up with some kind of like clever response to that kind of story. And then sometimes you just want the story to kind of almost speak for itself on that one. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. I, I love it. You got to watch that Florida meth, especially the after Christmas special. I mean, that stuff will just tear you apart, apparently. Yeah. Doesn't go well with eggnog. <laughs> They have it in the eggnog. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's a great story. Where was that again? Columbia County? That was in Columbia County. Of course it was. Columbia County is more north of Florida, and it's very rural, and that just seems about right. I love the fact that he was also hiding in the swamps like uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Predator. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Smeared with mud on his body, and that's it. <laughs> It definitely calls to question the noble savage theory. <laughs> you Maybe Rousseau like was on to something after all. Yeah, you felt like you're going to doubt that just a smidge. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I love that story. I think that might be the best one yet. So. And that came so. from uh, mysuncoast.com, uh, WWSB ABC 7's web news website. Gotcha. Gotcha. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I've been through Columbia County lots of times to, for, for people, for educators and stuff. And um, it's usually passing through. It's just nothing but swamp <laughs> and fields. There's not a lot going on. So it doesn't, doesn't surprise me one bit. Mom, what do you have? Well, mine's not nearly as entertaining. However, yeah, like, boom, you might drop with that story. I know. I know. We should have had him go last. However, Sorry, I did find that this one, no, no, I did find that this one was awesome. So this one again is actually the same, same site, WFLA.com, News Channel 8. But this one actually happens to be a maternity picture. Wow. So this couple recently took to Facebook to share their one-of-a-kind picture, showing family and friends how they plan to get some last-minute practice in before their baby arrives the only way a Floridian can by attempting to bottle feed a baby alligator naturally. They actually are standing what? there naturally. holding the baby alligator what? and Bobby bottle feeding this baby alligator. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Clearly Hold on. Her. For those that are listening, <laughs> this picture. 
But this is Florida couple. Wanted. <laughs> to be fair, he's about 50 pounds heavier than I would expect him to be, but everything else is spot mm. on Florida. Oh my yes. gosh. Like, I yeah, don't so describe she's... this picture. It's amazing. Yes. So they are bottle feeding this baby alligator as it rests on her belly where she's expecting a baby. Oh, is she? Okay, I couldn't tell from the photo. Yeah. I just thought she was a yeah, she's woman. No, she's expecting the baby. That's that's resting it, on the baby belly. In jean right cutoffs. There, that are open uh, all with, the way. Which are open at the waist. Um, all the way, yeah. They're standing in front of the state of Florida flag, which at first I was thought was the Confederate flag, and I'm honestly surprised that it isn't. And below that, we see a pump-action shotgun resting on a case of Bud Light. That's so actually pointing right at the woman. Right at yeah. the woman. Yep. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I give you Florida in a photo. We, oh, we, yes. we need to we need to link Isn't this that to, the, to the episode. Amazing. Yeah. Oh so, God. so what they say is, she told the news reporter that Fred the alligator was not harmed, and that they hope he will be an excellent brother figure to baby. Brother figure to baby. Brother figure to baby. They wanted this to be a touching memory to be had and passed down through the generations. So when when was this story written? This was actually written February 8, 2019. So do you think the child's been taken into protective services yet? One would hope so. One would, One hope. would hope so. One can like, only hope. Do you think the child is still alive and hasn't become baby's midnight snack? Yeah, Fred. Fred the alligator. Or Fred, that's right. Baby was the actual baby. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Fred the alligator. Yeah, they did not want to let us know the gender. They wanted that to be a surprise. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, that's the one thing they held back on in yes, this? Yes, they Fred's said. like pink frosting, due, blue frosting, whatever. It'll taste They are the due thing. March 6th, but wanted to keep the baby's gender a surprise. <laughs> that's the one thing they were like, no, no, we're going to hold back. Yeah, I think, I think you're right. I think that this photo much. should be linked to our our episode because there it is. Oh, it, it, it needs to. This is Florida in a picture. Yes. Uh, he sh although he should be wearing like tap out t-shirt and like I said, be like 50 pounds skinnier. Oh if not God. 75. I, I, you know, I don't even have words to describe the Florida S-ness. And I can't get over the gun actually pointed. Like, I, I'm hoping that it's just our angle it's like, and it's actually like pointing like way back behind them, but it's, it's not. I've looked at it several times and it really does look like it's yeah, just pointing it really right does. at Yeah, it really does. That's not great. Mm. There's so much uh, here. I, I can, I, I, I on can, the bed light. Case. Florida maternity. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Just, oh my mm. God. Yeah. Stay classy, Florida. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Well, that's my story. <laughs> I don't know if I can top either one of your stories. I could tell a Florida man's story, or I can tell you about the weird things that fall out of the skies randomly. Which ones do you guys want to do? Oh, I want to hear that. Yeah, the weird the things. things that fall out of sky. Modern plagues. Modern plagues. <laughs> Oh, wait, we've already got one of those. Yeah, I was going to say, it's 2020. Don't say stuff like that out loud, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'll tell you about things that randomly fall out of the sky. You guys ready? Let's do this. So ready. So basically, I've spent my whole life, for the most part, since well, since I was 12 here in Florida, and you get to know locals that have been here all their lives. And if you sit down long enough, especially if you're visiting these nursing homes and stuff, they'll start telling you these real weird stories that no one can explain. One of them that I came across is this random thing of things that are falling out of the sky. Let me see if I can pull up my notes real quick. I had it marked, and then now I don't because I am terrible at keeping my bookmarks correct. Oh, no, where'd it go? Where'd it go? The story of my life. Yeah, right. All right, so here's my notes. So also, you can look this up. I was looking through Weird Florida, and it also popped up in Weird Florida. Again, remember, I've got these stories from locals in Central Florida, but Weird Florida's book seems to really love Central Florida. It makes me think that we're not exactly <laughs> normal here. So back in apparently 1911, this is the very first time it was recorded, that things began falling out of the sky with no explanation. What I mean by that is <laughs> there's been reports of green globs, frogs, fish, golf balls, and of course, alligators. Of course. And That's according true. on May 11th, 1911, an alligator randomly fell in someone's yard, not in Florida, but in Evansville, Indiana. What? Yeah. 
in case you're wondering, that poor airborne gator was killed on impact, by the way. Oh, you see? Gator. Now, we've not had any falling alligators since then, but apparently, and I'm looking at the records, May 19th in 1959, a frozen chicken egg fell out of the clear blue and almost hit a man in Orlando downtown. What? One explanation that a high-flying hen might have laid it, might have flight. A high-flying hen. Hens don't fly that high. I don't Hens know. don't fly. <laughs> yeah, they, they like Hens bluster along fly. the ground. Yeah. The okay. only possible explanation that experts, by the way, they called in experts to investigate this because it was a case. They said because it was frozen, the only explanation they had was somehow randomly it fell out of a plane that was passing by, although no one reports to have seen a plane. How are we doing so and, far? And what plane just chucks an egg out the window? Like, it's not like blue ice or, you know... <laughs> Luggage from the cargo hold, like, I don't know of single huevos just being held somewhere in an aircraft that would well, slip loose. It suggests that a pilot trained all those years to become a pilot, got in a plane, took one solitary egg, flew up to height, and then thought, I'm going to egg one person in Orlando. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the story that I want. I mean, well, I'm here for that story. <laughs> <laughs> that story is this one guy who trained thousands of hours to be a pilot so he could throw one solitary chicken egg and egg somebody. That's what I want. So that's their only suggestion. By the way, I'm not done yet. Let me, here's some more instances of things randomly falling out of the sky in Florida. What about golf balls? Well, in Puta Gorda, uh, over 100 golf balls came out of the sky in 1969, September 3rd, specifically. Two possibilities for this. A tornado picked up the balls from a golf course, or else there's some heavy-hitting golfers nearby. Later, in 1970, sunbathers in Planda Linda Beach, east of Titusville, that's close to Cape Canaveral, for those that are wondering, reported that thousands of starfish fell out of the sky randomly. The blame was placed on a water spout, a small tornado that goes over water. However, the sky was completely clear that day. It was blue and beautiful, and there was no reports of a tornado. Later in Newport Ritchie, thousands of small fish fell over a wide area and made a huge mess. Experts speculate the fish eggs had been pulled up into the atmosphere and had been suspended in clouds until they hatched. Are you guys listening to this? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, what? <laughs> yeah. It goes on. But the residents said that sky fish were too... Skyfish Sky fish. Fish have been really hatched. Too bad they didn't have ice to preserve the fish, like ice cubes that fell on Lake Worth resident in September 1978. This is all documented. Oh my you can find the records for these. What Supposedly, like these cubes, not or ordinary hail, rained down over a period of three to four days. So this is actual ice cubes, not hail. Interdimensional hail. rifts are opening over Florida. I mean, I would expect. I would expect it. I'm not. I, I'm not surprised by it necessarily, but because Florida. But what the heck? You want to hear the experts' best explanation again? Oh, yeah, because this is actually better than the stuff that's Sky fine. Frigidaires? <laughs> because it was documented. Again, once explanations were offered with experts suggesting the ice falls could have been coming from frozen water on airplanes' wings. They said that the water had frozen on the wings and that when the plane descended to warmer altitude, it thawed enough to slip off. But how the person calls the question in the article, would it thaw in neat cubes? No one could have her, could answer that sorcery. question. Sorcery. It is Here's sorcery. In 1958, Miami was hit with another weird skyfall when a strange transparent globe fell in someone's yard. One observer noted it looked like a honeycomb. The puzzling object seemed to pulsate as if it was alive. A police officer documented that he stuck his finger into it but said that he could not feel anything. I love Florida police officers are like let me just stick my finger in it <laughs> when he withdrew his finger it left a hole in the globe when the object appeared to be spreading the homeowner collected some samples put them in a jar but after a short time the stuff dried up and the same happened with the globe it disappeared no one could ever explain what the globe was or why it had fallen out of the sky awesome. <laughs> so there you go there's some more lore now these things have been documented and i think the last case was probably the least dubious or the most dubious of the cases, you know. Um, but these other things, there were multiple witnesses that these things actually happened, were documented, and nobody can explain why things fall out of the sky here in Florida. And here I was thinking Sharknado was just a silly movie. 
I want to see alligator tornado now. Like we've had plenty of shark name movies. I want to see alligator tornado. Yeah. So yeah. there you Rocky have Kane. it. <laughs> there you have it. And by the way, there are whole books, and we're gonna have to wrap it up, but there are whole books on Florida stories and lore that people don't know. And I just I I have endless I've said multiple times on this podcast, I am endlessly fascinated by the lore and the weird stuff that happened in this state. Well, I'm looking at the time. I'm so sorry. I wish we had more time to tell more stories, but we're going to have to wrap it up there. It's been fun. Thank you guys for joining us, and thank you for telling your stories. And those that are listening, thank you for joining us. And we hope that you had a good laugh and you enjoyed part one and part two of Florida Man. Um, If you want to get involved with our community, we'd love to have you do that. There's a few ways that you can get involved with our community. If you have thoughts about Florida Man or if you have stories of Florida Man that you want to share, we would love to hear them. I never get bored of Florida Man, and I know that Mom and Brandon never do either. Uh, You can go to our Facebook page, which is you, me, and your mom. It's really easy to find. You can Google us and find us there. We're also on Instagram, which is you, me, your mom, 99. That's you, me, your mom, 99. And we finally have a Twitter account. <laughs> I finally embraced Twitter. So we're there too. And we'll be posting there more often as well. We just started it. So there's just a few posts, but it's growing quickly. You can find us there by you, me, your mom. I know I thought really hard when I came up with that Twitter handle. There's a couple other ways that you contact us as well. You can find us also, if you go to wherever you get your podcast, many of them have a voicemail button. If you click on that button, you'll be able to leave a voicemail for us. And we'll be able to actually feature your voice right on the podcast. And we would love to do that and hear your thoughts about Florida Man. Or if you want to tell us a story and you want everybody to hear that story, that would be a great thing we could put right on the podcast and let you tell us a story because I would love that very much, actually. And there's one last way that you could contact us if you prefer email. We do have an email for the show, which is you, me, your mom, 99 at gmail.com. That's you, me, your mom, 99 at gmail.com. And that's spelled? Y-O-U-M-E-Y-O-U-R-M-O-M, 99 at gmail.com. Thanks, Brandon. One last thing you can do for us since we're growing is is let other people know that we're out there. If you like what we do and you want to share it and you think that other people would get a kick at what we do, share us with your family and friends. That would be a big help. And if you haven't reviewed us yet, that's also a big help. That would let us know how we're doing, what you think about our show, where we can improve on. And maybe you can tell us some topics that you would like for us to discuss. Well, it's been a lot of fun. I've been Eric, and we've been joined by my best friend, Brandon. Hey. And my mom, Mom. Hey. Thanks for joining us. And just remember, wherever you are in this big, wide world, it can always get worse. Until next time, we'll see you later. Bye. Bye.